there's a new version of Android on its way. Android 12L is a small update on phones, especially Pixel phones, but it's the biggest change for Android on large displays in a decade, as Google looks to reboot Android tablets and make the big screen experience on foldables even better. I'm Alex from Android Central, and this is a hands-on look at Android 12L, what it is, and what it means for the weird category that is Android tablets. Take a sec to subscribe so you don't miss more on Android 12L and eventually Android 13, and we'll get started. The current Android 12L beta runs on a handful of Pixel phones and one very specific model of Lenovo tablet. And fortunately, we've got both here today to take a look at how this software is shaping up. A beta of the foldable version of 12L has been announced for the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3, but isn't available at the time of talking. On phones like the Pixel 4a 5G here, 12L is basically Android 12.1. It's the kind of half-step release that we sometimes see after a major numbered Android release that cleans things up a bit and adds new features that weren't quite ready in time for baseline Android 12. It's no secret that the old beta releases of Android 12 were buggier, and the final release of that version came later than in previous years, so it's not a huge surprise to see a point release like this being needed to add that bit of extra polish. So on phones, there are a handful of pretty minor changes to see here. Some are cosmetic, like the way some quick settings options now pop out of their respective menu boxes, or the way your wallpaper theming now carries over to the boot animation. Other changes include the ability to disable the double width clock on the lock screen, which is the default on Android 12 if you don't have any notifications. This seems to have come about after a request on Reddit because the large two line clock can be difficult to read for some people with dyslexia. There are some more tangible feature additions too, like the miniature wallpaper picker that makes changing your backdrop, and therefore your colour scheme, more like throwing on a different jacket or pair of shoes. It's easier to change your phone's theme to match your style for the day. Also, there are a bunch of changes around multitasking. Firstly, split screen looks different on Android 12L with this rounded border area in the middle. You can now flip the order of both apps with a quick double tap on the divider, and when you're on the recent app screen, app pairs will show up as just one entry as opposed to minimizing the bottom app as before. This is Android 12L though, with the L standing for large displays. And so the really big changes here are geared towards bigger gadgets, tablets and foldables. And for tablets in particular, it's the most significant change in more than 10 years. But it's worth pausing at this point just to take a look back over the history of Android tablets so we can see how messy things have become and why these major changes might be needed. The Android tablet story began with Android 3.0 Honeycomb way back in 2011. Honeycomb was rushed out to combat the original iPad and ended up being pretty rough around the edges as a result. Performance was not great, as you can see from this 2011 era promo video, that's not the video dropping frames, that's just how Honeycomb ran. Honeycomb largely failed to move Android tablets in large numbers, nor did it steal much of the iPad's thunder. But it did introduce new UI elements that made sense on larger screens. There was a rough approximation of a taskbar with software navigation controls. Apps could take on a more desktop-like layout, with so-called fragments being able to make better use of a 10 or 13 inch display. No multi-window at this point, but hey, it was a start. A couple of years later, Android tablets went through something of an identity crisis. Smaller, cheaper tablets were the ones that were selling, so Google's own Nexus 7 in 2012 and 2013 basically abandoned the Honeycomb tablet UI in favour of a blown up phone interface. No taskbar, just your basic software navigation keys. And this gigantic phone UI basically became the default for tablets on Android 4.4 as the platform began to stagnate a little. Despite companies like Samsung having robust multitasking on their tablets, Google didn't bother introducing split-screen apps until 2016, and even then it was more aimed at larger smartphones. As it stands, Google itself hasn't released an Android tablet since 2015, and this lack of buy-in by the platform holder hasn't helped Android's tablet market share. And by the end of the 2010s, it seemed pretty clear Google's vision around tablets was centered on Chrome OS and not Android. Chrome OS had its own Android app support, along with better window management, lower prices, and longer and more predictable software support. So for googly tablets, or at least tablets that ran Android apps, Chrome OS seemed like a better fit. And although Google's 2018 Pixel Slate, which ran Chrome OS, didn't set the world alight, there was no shortage of excellent Chrome OS-powered rivals. So here we are in 2022 with an apparent pivot back to Android on big screens. However, the major driver behind that, I would bet, is the new category of foldables. Google wants to try and steer the ship in terms of how Android looks and behaves on the large internal screens of phones like the Galaxy Z Fold 3 and Oppo Find N. 
And hey, when you figured out how to make that work, it turns out that UI also works pretty well on a big non-folding screen. The only device where you can play with this big screened version of Android 12L right now is the Lenovo Tab P12 Pro, a mid to high end slate from the Chinese brand based on a Snapdragon 870 with 8 gigs of RAM. More than enough to power a great Android tablet experience, though be warned, loading the 12L developer preview on here breaks a bunch of features, including but not limited to the fingerprint scanner, face unlock and the 120Hz refresh rate. Also, this build is based on AOSP, barebones open source Android, so you're missing many of the things that you would get on a Pixel like Material U color theming. You're really just getting the basic nuts and bolts of this next gen Android tablet UI. So here it is, Android 12L's more thoughtful tablet UI can be seen here on the lock screen before you've even opened any apps. Switch to landscape orientation and you'll see this split display. You've got your clock on the left and notifications on the right. Similar deal if you swipe down any time to see notifications. The quick settings occupy that leftmost half of the screen. The proportions aren't perfect here, but Google's renders give an idea of how it'll look when 12L is finalized. There's a whole new way to navigate and multitask on tablets with Android 12L, and that's based on the taskbar at the bottom of the screen. This is merged with the favorites tray of your home screen, allowing you to hop between apps more quickly. But don't worry, if you want to reclaim that lower portion of your screen, you can reduce it back to the old gesture bar with a long press. Dragging icons from the taskbar is your primary way to hop between apps or split the screen between them. Like Android 12L on a phone, you can easily swap the location of each app and divide them 50-50 or use a more freeform split. And when you come across an app that isn't optimized for tablets, looking at you Instagram, Android 12L has a new compatibility mode so it at least gets rendered in the correct orientation and aspect ratio. This isn't quite a full desktop experience, but it's a lot quicker and easier to get around than previous Android tablet efforts. The decision to just bite the bullet and introduce a desktop style taskbar was definitely the right choice and Android's multitasking is stronger for it. What's there so far on Android 12L is a solid improvement that brings stock Android on a tablet up to speed with some of the better manufacturer skins. And while I strongly suspect it's foldables and not tablets that are the major focus for these new design tweaks, both Android tablets and eventually Chrome OS devices will benefit from the changes being introduced here. Though with Chrome I suspect we'll have to wait until 2023 to see possibly Android 13 being introduced on the Chrome OS Android runtime. So I kind of doubt we'll see a great renaissance of Android tablets following Android 12L. Though maybe I'm wrong, Google recently made a pretty big hire relating to Android on larger displays. In any case, Android 12L should mean a better, more consistent experience on foldables and by default anything with a touchscreen that's bigger than a phone. That's it for now, let us know what you think of Android 12L down in the comments and subscribe so you don't miss future Android 12L and Android 13 coverage. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.